So I have another drive video and this time it's the way home and I thought I mean I said a lot about Argentina this morning um, and other things where I just gave my views on how I see them and blah 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 whatever and as it turns out there's much more happening and it's mainly due to the fact that you know I'm watching the games I don't watch much of the in-between stuff I read a little bit but I really don't have much of the time to do so so um, my observations this morning were of course overtaken by all the developments on the Argentina squad, a squad which I had no real idea at first but it made all the sense when I heard about it today so let me pull the camera a little bit up because you don't need to necessarily see just my belly yes let's do it this way just have a red light here that helps me out great so now I should be a little bit better so what I heard um, is that the Argentina team at least tried to make a revolution get rid of San Paoli which if you watch the game and how it uh, evolved makes in a way sense the team gave up after Caballero made that mistake and it seemed to me that Caballero is already not a member of the squad in a way and you know with his mistakes really it's um, he should not play and I really cannot imagine that this is the best goalkeeper that Argentina ever has had um, really not I know it's Romero usually who's playing back I'm sure the Argentinian league has better goalkeepers uh, Armani from River Plate is the one that people are now pushing for uh, I think he cannot do worse than um, Romero uh, not uh, Romero, uh, Caballero um, also Messi is disjointed uh, in from team tactics this team has so many great players going forward but no one to put them in place uh, Di Maria played but he played stupidly and I don't know if he played by himself or if he or followed the advice of his coach from what I gather no he uh, the coach has not much to say and if you look at the sidelines during the Argentina game the coach was yelling and screaming and nothing changed and in the end the team really gave up this third goal if you look at it it was just giving up there was nothing there and yeah all these developments don't bode well and still they have a chance and this is the odd thing it's yeah there is quality in the squad and they managed a point against Iceland uh, despite uh, other goalkeeping blunders they probably should have gotten even three if Messi scores that penalty but I think the whole situation is in Messi's head and funny thing a colleague of mine showed me today a cartoon uh, of the difference between Messi and Ronaldo and you see Messi with slumped shoulders head looking down and say Oh, it sucks so much that, uh, that uh, my team totally depends on the way I perform and here's Ronaldo chest pumped ah, it is so wonderful that all my team's performance depends on how I perform so uh, that in a way sums it up perfectly that um, Messi is tired of carrying the squad and he does it he, he tries to do it but Messi is a different player than uh, Ronaldo in a way Messi is a player that uh, relies on speed um, that he gets his moves that he can make his attack but for that he doesn't need to get the ball uh, at midfield he shouldn't get his own ball he needs to get the ball higher up the field for Messi to uh, then he is effective I think this is what Barcelona is doing and there of course you have the great have had the great midfield um, on the defensive side which Argentina is uh, missing I don't think neither Villa nor uh, Mascherano can do something really there uh, I'm sorry to say for Villa because he's a Milan player but I he is no Iniesta he is no Xavi he's no Rakitic um, but other than that I think Argentina forgot uh, doesn't know how to, how to defend at least not in the system that they are having at the moment uh, so that's one problem the other problem that I see you have this great Juventus strike force and yeah Dybala and Messi does, seemingly this doesn't gel well but those are two uh, Dybala and Iguain they play together at Juventus and Dybala is sensational for Juventus 
uh, at times, uh, the latter stages of, of, of the season, I thought Dybala was much more valuable to his team than Messi was for Barcelona. Uh, he was that spectacular. So to me, it's uh, you have to make this relationship work. Um, I'm not that convinced of Aguero per se. I mean, Aguero is a very similar player, uh, at least in size to Messi. He's more of a striker. Messi is more uh, the false nine, somewhere between a nine and a ten. For me, Aguero, I never found him that convincing. Maybe it's per personal because I mostly see him in Argentina. I rarely see games of Manchester City. Uh, a, they're not my team. B, I don't like to watch the Premier League that much. Um, just the way it is, but Aguero doesn't make an impact in the Champions League either. Uh, Iguain did for most of the time, Dybala did for most of the time, um, or at least much more than Aguero ever, ever, ever did. So for that reason I already would say that um, those two I would prefer. I know Iguain is known for botching chances, yes. Uh, he could have won that World Cup final if he was a, even a better striker than he is. I always thought his price tag moving from Napoli was overrated. I don't think Iguin is a uh, caliber of that kind, but I think he is probably the best pure striker. He also has the aerial threat that Aguero I don't think has. Yes, I think he made a header against Iceland, which is a feat in himself, but no, I don't think he is the Aguero is not necessarily the answer, although he might suffer from the same uh, problem as Messi does um, because he doesn't get the balls. So I don't want to make this all Aguero. I think it's down to the midfield and down to the fact that um, the Argentina team has no confidence in on the backside uh, being defensively sound. And if you have then some uh, qualms in the squad, which they obviously are there, um, yeah, that doesn't bode well. I think they need to get it in a way together and get it together quick and maybe just this chance might rile the squad together. Um, it's also a problem that some Pauli, uh, many people that uh, love uh, tactics think of him as kind of this mad genius and judging from what he managed to do uh, with Chile where they played a uh, super aggressive style even more so than under Bielsa uh, this might well be and I think uh, this could be something to watch out for however he took the squad late and he hasn't found his for for formation and I think he tries more his own tactical tricks than um, putting to the strength of the players, uh, selecting a squad that suits the players very well. I think they look comfortable when uh, in the first half against Croatia when they were on attack sim, they looked somewhat comfortable more when they are making high pressure. They don't look comfortable uh, in any other style of play and they don't look comfortable uh, having to score a goal. <laughs> That's going to sound. That's going to go well against Nigeria, I think. So yes, those are my thoughts on Argentina in a way. I think it still can be turned around. Will it go to the uh, all the way to the World Cup final? I don't think so. Um, also, the it might really be Messi's last tournament. I still think that age-wise he has one more World Cup in him, but I think he did this is probably the last World Cup where he's the focal point. He had three where he was the focal point. Uh, first one in South Africa, I think he did better than people give him credit for it. They just focus on him not scoring any goals. Um, in 2014, he was sensational, at least, I would say, up until the quarterfinal, when suddenly you didn't see more, much more of him, but that was because the uh, teams got a little bit better, but he still was the focal point of that squad. And they might, they should have won the World Cup, probably, although Germany, it was all... Those two teams were pretty even, evenly matched and probably Germany was more of a team than Argentina was. But that team had some plan. They were solid in defense, could go forward. And if Di Maria had played in the final, I think he was the missing link um, in the final between the midfield and Messi scoring. And it was um, kind of ironic that when uh, Argentina had the uh, friendly right after the World Cup again against Germany, that Di Maria scored three goals. Uh, it was kind of, yeah, if I would have played, we would have made it. And I think this was a big 
something uh, that he was missing in that final. Uh, having said that, Di Maria has not played much and has, ha hasn't played that well of late. And uh, he seemed a little bit futile against Iceland, always doing running down the left side, making in the pass. And so, yeah, um, there's a lot that has gone wrong. I personally really hope that there is kind of this, how to say, thunderstorm going through the squad, that they are not all resigning. And um, yeah, I think you gotta make Messi happy in order to succeed but you also got to give Messi a chance and for that you need to have a solid game plan you need to have a solid uh, play from the back and you need to rely on a goalkeeper that can handle the ball um, just a fun fact Caballero seemingly was selected because he's better with the foot yeah we saw that against Croatia uh, really ab absolutely nuts I have I have not heard much of Caballero before and all what I heard is that he's the backup goalie at Chelsea and that he's kind of a madcap goalie and I saw it already against Iceland he is not fit to play also the other reason why Argentina is not doing well um, I think is their horrible preparation they played one friendly against uh, Haiti ahead of the tournament and then they had this big scandal with playing Israel in Israel come on uh, it's fine to play Israel but playing in Jerusalem in this tense political climate get some opponents that are a little bit safer maybe you had the whole preparation in Barcelona and surroundings get someone to play in Barcelona against you uh, do something I just don't get it. I, I, uh, it seemed disaster written all over and I know talent wise uh, they're not up there with uh, Brazil uh, which is a much more solid squad but it, uh, Brazil doesn't have the star power up front I think. They have Neymar uh, but I think the remaining players I don't rate as highly as Messi, Higuain, Dybala, Aguero if you want. Uh, I just don't. Um, but Brazil has much more solid players around the pitch and that's what helps the squad the best thing for Argentina now is not to panic uh, play it calm play it safe uh, rely on your strengths choose a squad and tactics that actually play with your strengths uh, into your strengths not um, try to fit something just because you want to make it fit um, I don't know if Sampoli will be the coach or not. Uh, from what I hear, he averted the revolt, but Aguero will be dropped. Might not be the worst thing, as I said. I think that Iguain gives them a little bit more versatility up front. Um, the opponent, Nigeria is strong, but Nigeria uh, on the back is for surely not the organized team that, for instance, Iceland is, uh, or even Croatia. Um, you might give up a goal but you have to score more I mean if I remember in four years ago the Nigeria Argentina game was a really fun game uh, but any 3-2 Nigeria didn't give up yeah this time it will be even more in interesting going to leaving Argentina for now um, as you can see they are the team that's on my heart and probably I should have worn an Argentina jersey for, for that video just today is cold and I wanted to have a very long sleeve so the only long sleeve national team I have is France and it seemed wrong to wear a hockey jersey to the during, during the World Cup just doesn't doesn't fly otherwise I would wear a hockey jersey if it's a little bit cooler outside but yeah uh, the other teams that are uh, somewhat in trouble not as much trouble as Brazil is of course Germany the world champion um, which just might get the campaign going but I still think there are some problems within the squad I think there are some players that are dead weight um, it is mo mostly the big players from four years ago like Özil, Kedira, uh, Gündogan I think didn't was, was, was in, the, in the squad but uh, they brought more unrest than necessary into the squad um, I still think Germany will now qualify safely although I have slight hopes that they may not but on the other side I always say that I want to have a Germany 
squad go deep so they have someone to root for uh, if Germany goes into the semi-final and loses there this is almost an ideal scenario for me in the sense that I have my root I'm I have a passion to root against someone and not only four teams because we are very, very often teams that are in the semi-final most of them are root four so I need someone to root against as well and uh, Germany usually serves this role very very well um, again I have softened on Germany a lot you should have seen me too uh, during the 2006 World Cup or uh, even 2002 where I just couldn't, couldn't believe that they got such an easy run into the final um, yeah England might get this this time around but this England squad I already said I'm not hating as much on England as I used to actually, actually I'm coming around for this team uh, the England team doesn't seem to be a team in trouble uh, Brazil as crazy as it sounds I think Brazil made the best impression to me uh, in the on the second day when they really turned it on this seemed like a team that can destroy anyone and uh, only if the defense is going crazy but if they can keep this up for 90 minutes uh, whoa everyone really uh, this Brazil team looks really 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 strong so yeah uh, but Brazil could be in trouble and it will be on Neymar I mean Neymar's emotional outburst at the end of this game shows on the mu how much pressure this squad is and how much pressure they put themselves and I find it in a way curious because this surely is not the first Brazil team that is under uh, loads of pressure it is just that they seem a little bit more some may in touch with themselves or some would say they're a little bit more let's use a bad word sissies than before uh, and uh, it was the same I mean or even worse in 2014 when they uh, really crumbled to the, uh, um, uh, under pressure in conjunction with having a squad that you could feel it uh, that Brazil squad seemed a lot like the Argentina squad this year uh, there's one star player and the rest is just pedestrian and I, it feels a little bit similar uh, with Argentina this year. They have even less plan that, that, than that Brazil team had. And yeah, the star power of the Brazilian squad four years ago were its defenders, which is fortunately not the case any, any, anymore. I really want to see Brazil put on a great display. Uh, maybe they get me finally on board. And if Neymar drops his antics, that could be a great team to watch. Um, but at the moment they angered me more than they as they so often do as they so often do I think this is my qualm with Brazil I have high expectations and very often they are not met and if they then have a professional Hollywood actor like Neymar in there it just doesn't sit well with me it just doesn't I'd rather watch Germany in that case and um, yeah I think Germany pulled its Germany showed actually for Argentina to go to close the circle. Germany showed that if you execute your game plan, if you have a game plan, that's the first thing you need to have. But if you execute it calmly and you know this, these are your winning ways, you eventually will reap the benefits. And I think this is what happened to Germany. They had a little bit of self doubt against Sweden. This was in the first half when Sweden probably could have scored two goals against them. Uh, but Germany should have been up by a goal by then. Uh, and then they continued playing yes it was not pretty and I think it was a little bit too slow I think they should have played a little bit more aggressive but in the end they got rewarded for their efforts and uh, it hurts to say but rightfully so I think if Germany would not have get the win here um, I would have been I don't want to say giddy or happy but you know it wouldn't be too uh, I wouldn't be sorry for them uh, but it was also not undeserved uh, so they deserve to win this game I have uh, you gotta be fair and say that so I think Germany averted the worst uh, I really don't see them uh, losing to Korea I just don't Korea seems to be the uh, worst squad in that entire group um, not a bad one by the way, did you see how the Koreans were on average higher than the Mexicans? That, that was for me the biggest surprise of the Korean squad. 
but yeah the Korean squad is even on a bad day it shouldn't be a match for Germany and I can't even see Germany winning really by two goals um, I think it helps that then Boateng is out because Boateng was a little bit of a liability uh, as great as a player as he is I think uh, he's not fully match fit and therefore he's more a liability and they have better players so um, we'll see Germany will get out of the group I say that I am doubtful about Argentina I think also Brazil will make it out of the group um, they just have a tricky situation where they have to avoid Serbia and they also have to make I don't know if they should gamble too much I mean I told us since in the morning we might have a very uneven World Cup bracket. We might, and I said it also in the video that I just posted uh, on uh, how I predict the tour tournament to go. This could lead to very weird matchups. Uh, Germany has to play first, so uh, Brazil will know what results they will need if they wanted to avoid Germany. I, for some reason, I can even see that happening, but also the Swiss need to play with that. That could be interesting and then of course Belgium and England will know who they will or won't want to play again I don't think they worry too much about their opponent of group H because whoever they get they are favorites to beat them and in addition I think they are uh, equally nasty opponents Colombia maybe more so than Senegal or Japan but yeah do you wanna you and, and, and you cannot really decide it because I mean I think if uh, Colombia goes through they will most likely not do it in first place and that adds to the conundrum of the upper half of the bracket I think so they will that will be interesting to watch um, I think it will really go down do, uh, uh, do you, who do you want to pick in the quarterfinal and their second place in group G looks very 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 enticing go back to the video that I just posted uh, my view on the uh, uh, on the th first 32 games I think uh, this uh, the situation after the first 32 games well before the final game, 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 game group, group play just a previous uh, previous video and you can get a good look you also can go on my blog to see how things are shaping up to be so you get the full picture there um, yeah we were joking today that uh, we we had to see where England uh, if England or Belgium is ahead in the fair play ranking and it is England uh, kind of of course and we all said if that's a 0-0 and you want to have second place there will be some fouls if you really want to go that far so that could be an awful game uh, I think England Belgium was a game that many people look forward to I think it's gonna be a terrible 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 game one that you don't want to watch except if you have some morbid and fun uh, in watching two, ga two teams wanting to lose <laughs> could be super entertaining could be 7-7 seven, seven with three red cards on each side uh, I'm just joking I don't think it will go that far it will not, not be as blatant but I just the way things shape up and then of course how could this be averted I think FIFA is the uh, FIFA got already one thing right it's probably the topic for another video but let's put it in while I still have five minutes to go to be home um, they finally got it right that yes we can all uh, cry foul about the FIFA ranking but if you have a ranking you want to use it for your seeding and they finally did it that the pots are now seeded uh, one through four being the uh, host and best seven nations are in pot one and then uh, the next eight are in pot two and so on and, and so on and it made for more even groups I, you, I gotta admit that but now the other problem is that um, it still can happen that Brazil and Germany are playing each other because you never can avoid a slip up um, and you could make the seedings a little bit fairer by not drawing the order of the group seats but by predetermining where the group seats will go I think this would make a whole lot of sense for instance um, let's say the host is you want to give the host the most advantage so he will get the top seat 
then uh, in our case so Russia would be um, in top seed then I would give Brazil uh, was I think number one or was it Germany uh, maybe it was Germany uh, so let's say German Germany is number two then Brazil is number three so you would place Germany as far away from Russia as possible put it in H Brazil um, what's the next well uh, you put it in the upper bracket with uh, Russia oh no you put you want to have two and three together so you put then Brazil on the opposite of the Germany bracket so you would put Brazil in group E where they are um, I'm just making up now numbers let's say Argentina is number four then number four goes in group D number seven goes in group C and so on uh, then um, uh, no, number five goes in group C number six then should go um, with the third place team would go in group F number seven would go in group G and number eight would go in group B and then you had it a whole lot more spread out because then um, you you avoid those big game clashes already in possible or in the second round and this has been happening now at the World Cup for three tournaments in, in a row in South Africa Brazil and Spain were the top two teams they could have played each other so, uh, they were in group G and H Brazil uh, Brazil 2014 same thing uh, Spain uh, and Brazil were the top two teams and they were right next to each other uh, and it was very likely given how things were going that Brazil and Spain uh, would play each other once Spain lost to the, Nen to the Netherlands, I mean they crashed out in the group phase and don't even get me started on the Chilean tactic against the Netherlands in the final group game. So um, that would be an improvement that I would definitely make to the World Cup seedings even for 48 teams. Just make the top seeds, yeah, make a top one, don't make it a draw, make it really a seeding procedure and then uh, assign the other teams to the pots because uh, frankly that doesn't make too much of a difference anymore at least I feel best would be of course to not have a draw at all but that would mean uh, loss in television ratings uh, because the draw is probably one of the most interesting uh, non-sporting sporting events out there uh, gives the host nation a lot to do so these are my thoughts on teams in trouble um, and the kind of weird bracket that we're gonna have although it's gonna be a lot of fun and maybe we finally get the world champion that is not a world power at least beforehand um, it happened in the euros twice and now it so that was fun sorry for the interruption but <laughs> i really didn't expect to meet my wife on the way down she's getting with the big daughter and i can at least watch the beginning of the game now at home and yeah we'll take it from there uh, so what i was saying uh, having the seating system would be nice and yeah this was uh, my thoughts mainly on argentina i wanted to call this uh teams in trouble i think i still will do that i think also germany uh, brazil and i don't think brazil is, is in trouble but they could be because serbia is one nation has proven on a junior level that they can beat brazil and on a good day serbia is very very dangerous just don't get too caught up in politics and they have also some turmoil for that in, the, in their squad and yeah so those three teams that everyone those are the ones that of the big teams that still could get eliminated uh yeah spain and portugal could also but i, I just don't see it but i'll talk to you about that tomorrow how i see that spain and portugal uh, are doing um and yeah i will talk to you soon about all that i think first you will get my thoughts on group a and how it finished i will talk to you soon i hope you enjoyed this video i really enjoy doing this while driving it keeps me calm so hope you enjoy it too bye if you enjoyed this video please hit like and subscribe to my channel if you've already done so i would like to thank you for your support it is very much appreciated also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.